This video will talk about systems of nonlinear equations. So let's think about how many solutions we would even have if we're talking about nonlinear. We've talked about linear and realized that most of the time we're going to have one. But if I have a line in a circle, how many would I have? Well, if I have a circle and I have a line that looks like this, then that would mean that I have no solutions. And if I have a line that's going to be tangent to my circle, that means that we have one solution. And then my only other possibility is if my line goes through my circle, and that will give me two solutions. So I have zero, one, two, or possible solutions. What about a circle and a parabola? We could have any combination. We could have a line and a parabola, a line and a circle, a circle and a parabola, a circle and a circle, a parabola and a parabola. We could even have a log and a parabola, all kinds of things. But we're just taking a couple into consideration here. So if I have a parabola that looks like this, and then I have a circle below it, say, well, that would give me zero solutions. But I have one. Well, if I have a circle with a parabola that the vertex is tangent to that circle, I could have one. Could I possibly have two? Well, let's think. A circle. And what if this vertex of my parabola was inside the circle so that only my legs went through the circle? Well, that would give me two. Could I possibly have three? Sure. Shift that up. And remember, these parabolas could be flipped upside down too and do these same kinds of things. I'm just doing one direction here. In fact, I'll switch, I'll switch it just to be different. What if I had my vertex right there and then I went through my circle like this, then I'd have three solutions. I could do four if my vertex was outside of my circle, but it went all the way through it. So that would give me four. And five, I think, would be a little difficult since I only have two legs of my parabola. So when we're solving these things, we could have multiple solutions, but we're going to use the same methods that we did for linear equations. So let's try one. This says substitution. So I see that this is a y equal. So I want to put this one into this equation. So here's my y. Minus 1 is equal to ln x plus 12. And some of you are beginning to see that these definitely look different than the linear ones. So what is y equal to? It's equal to ln x squared and then plus 1. Well, if I drop my parentheses, because there's nothing on the outside to distribute, I can see that I'm going to have positive 1 and negative 1 that cancel each other out. So I'm left with ln x squared on this side, and I'm equal to ln of x plus 12 on this side. Well, I have that uniqueness property, same log, same base of my log, so I can just say that x squared is equal to x plus 12. And we had the quadratic, so we can say that we have x squared minus x minus 12, bringing both those terms to the left-hand side. And I'm going to use my quadratic formula on it. Find out that when I have a is 1, b is negative 1, and c is negative 12. And it tells me that my x's are 4 and negative 3. So I have two x's, but remember a system is ordered pairs. So I know I'm going to have x equal 4, but I got to find out what y goes with it. And then I also know that x is going to be equal to negative 3, and I need to know the y that goes with it. So let's go back here. Remember, we can plug it back in to any one of our original equations. I'm going to go back to that top one. It looks a little bit nicer for me. And I'm going to say that y is equal to ln, and then I've got my 4 that I have to square, plus 1. I go to my calculator, and ln of 4 squared, close the parenthesis, plus 1, tells me that I have 3.77, approximately. So now I have negative 3 that I want to work with. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say y is equal to ln of negative 3 squared, but it's inside, plus 1. So this will be 9 when I squared. ln of, and then I need another parenthesis because my base on that square is actually negative 3. And then squared, and then close my argument plus 1. And I find out that y in this case is going to be 3.197, so we'll say 2, 0. And those are my two answers. So then it does say that we should check by graphing. And I already put these into my calculator. What I did was I said this was y is equal to ln x plus 12, but then I add the 1 to the other side. So here's my two equations, ln x squared plus 1. That's the top equation, then ln x plus 12, and then plus the 1 when I brought it over. And I get this graph. So I can see that I have two intersecting points right there. So second trace, 5. And notice I don't have anything in my y right here, so I need to move my cursor until I do. And then I can just press Enter, Enter, Enter for the first one. And there's my 4 and my 3.77. And then I do second trace, 5 again. 
and if you get this trick it's helpful but if you don't it's okay if I start moving trying to get closer to there you see I'm moving along this funny looking graph but if I and you see that that's the ln x squared plus 1. If I toggle down and say my down arrow, now I have y2. And I'm looking at the other graph, so I'll be on this log graph. And I can move to the left, but I get there a lot quicker because I am just on the simpler curve. And I press enter three times, and I get my negative 3 and my 3.197 or 2, 3.2. Elimination, remember, we said we had to line up like things and have opposite coefficients on them. Well, this is a linear and this is a circle. So what are we going to do there? Well, let's look at it. I can solve this thing for y. So y is going to be equal to 5 plus 2x. And I can solve this one for y squared is equal to 85 minus x squared. Now, if I took if I tried to get to y here, I'd have a square root, and that makes things really difficult. But I see this y, and I could make it y squared. If I square both sides, I could make this left-hand side become y squared. So squaring this side, I get y squared. Squaring this side, remember, it's 5 plus 2x times 5 plus 2x. So 5 times 5 will be 25, or to take the first term and square it. And then I'm going to have 5 times 2x twice, so that would be... 10 times 2 or plus 20x and then I'm going to have my 2x times my 2x which would give me plus 4x squared. So now I can say underneath this bottom equation that my new equation that's going to combine with it is going to be y squared is equal to 25 and I'm going to rearrange this so that li things line up so 4x squared and then plus 20x. I'm just going to kind of switch these two terms so things line up nicely and if I can get them to be opposites, then nice things happen. So I'm going to multiply through by a negative in here. And when I multiply through in a negative, that becomes a negative y squared and a negative 25 and a negative 4x squared and a negative 20. And now I can add. So y squared plus negative y squared is 0. 85 plus a negative 25 is going to be 60. Negative 4 x squared and a negative 4x squared will be minus 5x squared. And then minus 20x because there's nothing to combine with that one. And you can see that we have a quadratic. If it helps you, we could say negative 5x squared minus 20x plus 60. It's a positive 60 there. And I'm just going to use my quadratic formula so that I don't care that that's a negative 5x squared. So negative 5 is my a, negative 20 is my b, and 60 is my c. And I find out that x is equal to negative 6 and x is equal to 2. Well, once again, I have to find out what my y is that goes with those. So I'm going to go back up to this linear equation and say that y is equal to 5 plus 2 times my negative 6. Well, that's negative 12 plus 5, so y is going to be equal to negative 7. So up here, I'm going to write my ordered pair of negative 6 for x and negative 7 for y. And then I also have an ordered pair that starts with 2 for the x, and then I'll work my problem. So y is equal to 5 plus 2 times my 2, which is x. So y is equal to 9. So I also had the ordered pair 2, 9.